Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. We're gonna play as Eden again here today. Good start, good start, good start. Ooh, the Mind Red Patch BPFM. Waha! We're on a shovel run as well, which I'm actually quite pleased with. We shouldn't die here. We should be okay here. Um. On this first floor is what I mean to say. We also got a sack right off the bat, which is a little ridiculous. Um, the shovel doesn't necessarily provide us with, with anything of, of real merit. That was pretty convenient, though. It was pretty convenient how they gave me a troll bomb that almost blew up in my face and pushed me towards an orange fire that could have easily shot us. Um, we're gonna We're gonna start playing better. I have, you know, I've gotten a couple of wins under my belt recently, but this is not where we want our standard to be in Isaac, but I'm not going to belabor the point. Sometimes I think, you know, the more you're like, oh, I'm going to fail chemistry, the, you know, it, it it's paralytic in a way. You're like, you know, instead of spending your time worrying about whether or not you're going to fail chemistry, you should be studying. Instead of spending my time being like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in a slump in Isaac, what we're going to do is we're going to play Isaac. We're going to get our fundamentals back. We're going to get practiced. We're going to get warmed up. And then eventually, you know, by doing that, hopefully we reach a point at which we've reached some base level of competence of which we can be relatively proud of again. But for now, we're not there, and I'm not going to sweat it, because uh, some of these losses recently have been very funny, at the very least. And, and probably funny to watch my slow descent into, into madness as well. Um, I, I cannot have a run where I don't get hit by these flies. It's just not in the cards for me. We have a... Okay, that was not very smart either. And I almost got hit again there. Brain, work it out here. I believe in your ability to do this. Because you're good enough, you're smart enough, and god dang it, people like you. What do I want from our boss here? Honestly, our stats are good, especially with the uh, advents. Let's try that right away. Uh, especially with the advent of our uh, sad onion here. We got really good DPS, or at least like beyond acceptable DPS. I think I will use the shovel on this floor, just to see if we get some kind of special floor. Um, I was thinking about maybe waiting and using it on the next floor, but we, we have more to worry about on the next floor. We're more worried about, um, obviously getting a, uh, a deal with the devil, so we don't want to just leave when we find, like, a mob trap room or something like that that is unlikely to be as useful. Um, fine here. Um, the sad onion pickup really is selling this run right now, because our stats were not amazing, and three spirit hearts is... Blue baby level, this is actually really good. It's blue baby level, which is enough to survive, you know, for the foreseeable future at the start of a game, but not enough to be like, okay, I'm set forever. Spend one cent to come in here. Dude, I'm telling you, I do not believe that they did not patch the game, if that makes sense. I believe that the game has been patched to fuck arcades. Now, I am I tend to not be uh, too reactionary, personally. Maybe it was patched to fuck arcades to make the game more interesting in some way that I have not yet foreseen. But maybe creators have been watching people go to arcades, get a bunch of free HP and money, and they said, okay, let's take that mechanic out of the game and give them two buttons and a three skull Monty instead. In which case, I would be disappointed. Now, at the same time, we've got to give it a little bit of time to breathe. If you ask people for their knee-jerk reaction to anything, except free bread at a restaurant, it's going to be negative. And even then, they'll be like, well, does it come with the olive oil and the balsamic vinegar? And you're like, well, that's 50 cents extra. 50 cents?! What am I paying you 750 for bottomless spaghetti for if I'm not getting aged balsamic vinegar from a Florentine clay pot found during the time of ancient Rome? I want you to unearth Caesar's personal salad and serve it to me. I'm aware the Caesar salad is not thusly named. Well, I mean, it might be named after Julius Caesar, but it's not like, you know, he returned from his triumph in Gaul and said, hey, put some bacon on this lettuce and then cover it in a cream-based dressing. And for once, I'm not talking about my jizz. I had, in my head there, you can feel me uh, go back and forth. I was like, what's the better word for the comedic effect here? Jism, maybe, but I didn't want it to take precedent over the giant. Anyway, you know, there's a, there's a whole science to that that maybe I've betrayed here. Um, you know, as soon as you look at it, it disappears. It's like a, it's like a Dracula to a mirror. Serpent's kiss, very good. 
We will go into our secret room, but we're gonna go in from the room that's right here. Just so I don't fudge it up. Now, Serpent's Kiss is actually, it, it's very good, and I, I, you know, correctly stated that it's very good. But I'd really like for it to pay out with some Demon Hearts right off the bat. That would be very nice, because I'll probably end up, oh, that sucks. I'll probably end up uh, spending a red heart here on our deal with the devil. Hopefully we get the opportunity to spend a red heart on our devil. Devil deal, that is. But if we uh, have an extra black heart as well, that which we do now, and you know, rooms like this with a lot of weak enemies are going to be ideal for making that happen, hopefully. Um, we can now think about taking a second deal with the devil, even if it doesn't give us HP. Now, there has to be a second option for a deal with the devil to begin with, but um, there's there's a chance that we could make that happen. Not an unreasonably uh, low chance, for sure. Hopefully we get even one more uh, black heart here. Or a bomb that I could use to access one of these many tinted rocks. Nope. Okay. We might be able to buy a bomb on our shop if we just get one, one money. It's my rap name. I'm on a new fiscal level. No, we're not going to do that today, okay? Future is going to sue you for making him uncool. Excuse me. You didn't get caught in your own explosion? What is this? Do you, uh, do you have Pyromaniac? If so, please drop it so I may take it. Okay, a speed upgrade is not what I was looking for, but that's okay. Oh, lordy, lordy. We got Brimstone. And we got Incubus. Now, normally, I would definitely suggest not doing this. Especially when we're leaving behind some Tinted Rocks that maybe we could be able to grind for. But, um, I'm going to do this because I would really like to have Brimstone combined with Incubus with Brimstone. Now, admittedly, slightly frightened by our lack of HP. That's why I'm rushing the shop here, and if the shop doesn't have a spirit heart, then, well, which it does, uh, then I'd be going straight to the boss room, as scary as that might be, to try to uh, pick up an HP upgrade, hopefully, but this should guarantee us the win. Ooh. And it only left us in dire straits, hopefully temporarily, and via good play, we might be able to make it out of that, but I, I really like this run, which I think is obvious. I don't think, you know, there's any explanation required necessarily. Uh, Telepathy for Dummies is probably substantially more boring than the shovel, but I'm gonna take it anyway. Actually, you know what? It's probably more exciting. It's just, uh, it has a little bit lower variance, I guess. It's always going to be good. I think we just fight without having Telepathy for Dummies. We don't necessarily need it. So what's, what's the be-all end-all here? It's pretty easy. Any deal with the devil that gives us HP, uh, so Abaddon is up there, but nine lives is really the the one we would love the most here. Of course, we didn't get it, but that's okay. I, I say, of course, not this be like, oh, uh, of course they don't have my favorite brand of caviar today. I always go for Russian beluga, but they only have a Swedish sperm whale. My favorite WWE wrestler, of course, the Swedish sperm whale. He always he gives you like a. Carolus Linnaeus elbow drop, and he says, this one's for the Vasa, and then you gotta explain to him, dude, no, no warring army sunk the Vasa, it just sunk, dog, it happens, but he's, like, in denial about it, it's, it's a whole thing. Okay, grab this, we do have a bomb, we'll use that to get to our second secret room. When I make jokes, uh, like that... They're meant to be light-hearted, not even jabs, just references to other countries. I hope that these go over as well in other countries as they go over in Canada, you know? Canadi the thing Canadian comics love the most is, is making fun of Canadians. Like, here's my impression of a Canadian stand-up comedian. I was at the Tim Hortons the other day, and I was thinking, Canadians are so nice. I ordered a double-double, they gave me an ice cap. And I said sorry. And then the uproarious laughter, even though it's not funny, they're laughing because they're polite, right? We get those jokes all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's because we're in North America. It's like a punchline to be Canadian. Even even comedians I respect will be like, wow, that's a Canadian reaction to that. And I'm going to be like, yo, brother, watch yourself. Battle of Emmy Ridge. Look it up, you son of a bitch. We're coming for you. 
But I, I don't know if that's the like, is that the way it works in uh, in Europe as well? Like, if a Belgian stand-up comedian got on stage and was like, "Wow, things are sure crazy in Norway, huh?" I thought the place was called Oslo. Why is everybody getting so high? And then there are people like, "Get off the stage, you Alphonse sax loving son of a bitch." This is like maybe I shouldn't uh, go too hard on the uh, on the nationalism here. I don't know if if people think that you know we're all brothers separated by arbitrary borders, or if people are like, "Nah, dog, don't put me in the same camp with those motherfuckers." This is the kind of run that you can get to here, or the kind of commentary you can get to when you're on a run like this. When your run is, you know, perchance on a new level, is what I might suggest is the correct nomenclature there. I guess, you know, as as Canadians, I try to dish it back as well, but, you know, it it's, it's hard, because most of the people making jokes about Canada are American. And it's really easy to get, like, too nasty when you make a joke about America. And I, like, I spend a lot of time in America. Certainly the second, like, most country, or the, the country I visit second most. And, you know, if you go on the internet, America is either the greatest place in the world or it's a hellhole where everyone weighs 800 pounds and carries around an M16 at all times, right? But it's too easy to get, like, to make your jokes nasty. Like, it's not a good Canadian reaction. If, if somebody says, like, yeah, everyone in your country's nice, I hear they don't even lock their doors at night. And you say, well, yeah, well, at least everybody doesn't have a grenade launcher. At least they didn't have uh, 400 mass shootings last year. And you're like, whoa, dude, this is an inappropriate reaction to, uh, they were just being nice. And you've taken that niceness and you've responded to it in a way that is far too defensive. It's even made the video too real at this point. But it's like... You know, sometimes as as the nice country, you don't want to be the nice country. It's like if you were in uh, if you were in school and people, I guess we're re-rolling everything for no reason, <laughs> and people were like, "Oh, you're such a nice guy," and you're like, "I'm not a nice guy. I got an edge. Sometimes I don't just listen to the Wiggles. Sometimes I listen to I listen to non-offensive rap music." I mean, it does get... Sometimes Ludacris bangs a little hard, so I don't necessarily go with that. But, you know, that song, number one spot's pretty good. Probably should be using Telepathy for Dummies at all available opportunities, huh? Um, all I'm getting at here is, I guess there's worse things than being considered the nice country. But sometimes you want to have an edge as well, you know. We gotta be like, we're not a nice country, we got mass murderers. But people in Canada, I don't know where this came from. We do lock our doors. Occasionally, you come across somebody who doesn't lock their doors. People don't go, oh, wow, eh? That's some nice backwoodsy charm there that people trust each other. They go, hey, you fucking moron, lock your doors. Even if, like, people are always like, no one's gonna rob you. Okay. Or they, or they say, perhaps, if someone's gonna rob you, the lock's not gonna stop them. This is the worst interaction you could possibly have in planet Earth's history. Because when the cops get there, they're going to victim blame you a little bit. They're going to be like, well, did you lock your door? It doesn't mean it's not robbery, but they're going to be like, hey, you know, you could have, like, at least slowed him down. Made our life a little easier. I'm going to hermit card out of here. Um, just because it wouldn't stop. That's like saying, you know, oh, I'm not going to wear my seatbelt. Because if I get in an accident going at highway speeds, probably going to die anyway. Yeah, but like, what if you didn't, though? Like, what What if it was just like a bunch of teenagers coming by your house? And they're like, let's check this door to see if it's locked. And it's locked. Ah! And they just move away. Maybe they're going to find a house that does an unlocked door. They're probably going to be able to find one because there's so many idiots out there. Anyway, this is my long roundabout story, uh, which is my way of saying, lock your door. It's like, you know... You got a bike, lock it up, man. If they really want your bike, it might not stop them. But if they're just looking for a bike, you're probably fine. We're going to have a, a struggle thinking of stuff to talk about. If this episode continues to get this strong, or continues to stay this strong, rather. What's scary right now is that our HP is actually still bad. Serpent's Kiss can kind of get us out of it, but we're not in a good situation here for HP. But, of course, with respect to everything else, we're, we're completely fine. 
Now, I have this world card. I was holding it as if it was going to be like our ace in the hole. I just realized that there's like absolutely no chance that it provides us with any benefit whatsoever. Nine lives. Oh, you don't even drop nine lives and now I feel like an idiot. There's like very few things that, that anger me. I actually am... Uh, I mean, everyone would say this about themselves, but I'm very easygoing. People don't like to admit that they're tightly wound, but... As much as I play a character uh, in these videos and on the NLSS sometimes, I'm, I'm a pretty laid-back dude. Someone was like, hey... I'm gonna live my life without locking my doors, you can't stop me? I'm not gonna be like, I'm gonna stop hanging out with you. You know, as long as you're a... Genuinely, or generally a good person, that's fine by me, but the door locking thing gets me. Because people think they're like, outsmarting... The world. Ooh, yeah, we'll take Diplopia. Let's, let's mix it up here. They're like, well... If I'm gonna get robbed, I'm gonna get robbed. Why live my life in fear? Locking your door is not living your life in fear. When it, seeing somebody outside and peering through your curtains and calling the cops, oh, that kid's been skateboarding for 45 minutes, that's living your life in fear. That's sad and depressing in multiple levels. Locking your shit up is just being, like, cautious. <laughs> like, this. what? Wow, I'm not gonna put my seatbelt on. Because if I get in an accident, I'm fucked anyway. I don't want to live my life in fear. Um, I mean, I guess we could go buy, like, Spider Baby with the store credit. It says yes. I mean, I'm not that excited about it, but it's okay. Like, if you apply that logic to any... It's like, never do anything that could possibly be construed as living your life in fear. Yo, ain't nobody gonna make me their bitch by making me do anything that could save my life. Why pay my taxes? Maybe the IRS will come for me, maybe they won't. If they come for me, pay my taxes, I'm not gonna live my life in fear. Okay, admittedly this metaphor is starting to fall apart a little bit. When it comes to stuff like... You know... I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the, the best way to handle this. When it comes to stuff that requires work, I understand it. If you live in a house that's like below the building code or something like that, and you're like, well... You know, I don't want to die if a... Richter scale 1.0 earthquake comes about, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's gonna cost me $150,000 to fix my house. I have a lot of sympathy there, because that's work. It's the same thing where, you know, if your doctor's like, hey, you should really stop eating white bread, and you're like, well, I recognize that this could kill me eventually, but at the same time, sandwiches are delicious. Like, that's that's something that requires work and, and changing your habits. Locking your door, it, it requires nothing, man. You just turn your wrist a little bit, and then, admittedly, you have to remember your house key. If, if that's your reason for not locking your house, you're living in a, a strange and very unadult world. Well, I don't, okay, let's see if we want to use, no, we don't want to use Diplopia here. We probably want to use Diplopia on our boss rush, and then maybe do boss rush, but let's see. I'm, I'm getting up my own butt with this, uh, you know, little preachiness here. But I'm just saying lock your doors. It's the first line of defense, man. Yes, if you lock your doors... Okay, first off... We want to take a second... Bob's brain, I think. Start by taking the ones on the outside. And are we gonna roll dads? Oh shit, I accidentally... Did I accidentally take... I took the wrong Bob's brain. I mean, we can still get those other two items, which is cool. But one of them is meaningless. So I got... I mean, a second hot bombs even would have been fine, but anyway. Can we dads key our way out of boss rush once it started? Yes. <laughs> okay, I will do so then. Uh, Libra is very dangerous, but anyway. Yeah, man, if you start locking your house, you're gonna have to remember your keys. I'm being real with you. That's that's part of being an adult, is that you, you know, may at some point have to break into your own house. But you should also just get used to having your keys on you. What's really nice about, you know, locking your door and carrying your keys on you is this, uh, the fact that you can basically give yourself one panic attack a day by patting your pockets and being like, oh shit, where are my keys? I forgot them. Oh fuck. Got a call locked. Oh no, never mind. There they are. They're just in my pocket. They're in the pocket I checked, but for some reason they didn't feel like they're there. That's, that's the... Like, if I could be a renaissance painter, that would be my portrait of adult life. It would be a man frantically searching his pockets for keys that are there. It's not even a tragedy, it's it's like a... Just a small... 
like a little miniature pathetique or something. Now, uh, we'll take this. We'll grab this. Reroll everything. We got two more spirit hearts out of it, which is amazingly useful. And then I walked on uh, the spikes to pick up the spirit heart. Doesn't doesn't make me particularly thrilled to be uh, myself right now, but that's okay. Second or regular secret room? No, that was the second secret room. It's not gonna provide us with anything. I actually feel like maybe Dad's key gave us, uh, or sorry, Libra gave us an awesome bonus, damage wise, but I'm not sure. Oh, I gambled on being able to get rid of this heart for permanent Polaroid invincibility, and you screwed me. That was a hard spirit heart to spot there. Okay. Let's come down here. Uh, do I want the curse room? We do have one guppy item. We can't fly, though. I think I'm going to ignore it for now. Shouldn't sweat Polaroid invincibility too much, I guess. Permanent Polaroid invincibility. I don't know why it didn't sound right when I said... When I didn't say permanent, I should say. What if we open this and then Dad's key? Oh, so Dad's key can open... It can literally tear a seam in the concrete, but it can't open the bars on this door? I find that hard to believe, Edmund. If that is your real name, which I have reason to believe it probably is based on it being what you use to refer to yourself as on a regular basis. I guess we could dance key ourselves uh, through rooms that we don't necessarily want to do as well, like this one right here. I don't want to fight these guys. I don't really want to fight anyone. Like, if I could beat this game just by killing enemies that were already murderers, that would assuage my conscience. Conscience, quite a lot. Just another example of things that annoy me about the English language. By the way, the, the standard defense there is going to be, Hey, Northern Lion, why don't you just learn to speak? The language is 400 years old. You've had time. The more English you learn, the more complicated it becomes because you're just learning, like, more things, more words that you can confuse other words with. I get conscience and conscious confused all the time. And it makes me sound like an idiot, even though I know what I'm talking about. I'll be like, you know, it's like your conscience mind. And then people go, well, excuse me, uh, it's actually your conscious mind. I know this. The brain just didn't. It, it got 99.95% right and a little wrong over the course of it. You're not illuminating anything for me. I don't know. If I had seen it in written prose, I would agree with you that that's, that's a mistake. But, uh, you know, why don't we just have, we'll have conscience. And then, the word that is conscious, like the conscious mind, we're just going to call that flarg and blow now. Your flarg and blow mind. Or your, your, your flarg and blow. He's gone on flarg and blow. Get the smelling salts. And I think, really, if we just started flarg and blowing um, a lot of words in the English language, it would be a, a better, it would be a better language to learn. I am generally of the opinion that, um... I mean, I've, I don't know why I'm using bombs for that, for the record, but it also does not matter because this win is pretty much guaranteed at this point. Um, eventually, there'll be like a universal translator, and that's going to be sweet. And I know that, you know, that's probably annoying if uh, you spent like your whole life learning languages and that's like an employable skill. I actually, I sympathize with that a great deal. But then I think, you know, the robots are coming for all of us, dude. You know, one-third of uh, America is employed in the transportation sector. I'm not saying we're getting self-driving cars before 2030, but at some point, there's going to be self-driving trucks. They're going to be they're going to be hauling milk from, uh, you know, Wichita to Kansas City. Which is not actually not that far in the whole scheme of things, I guess. Um, and it, they're coming for all of us. Eventually, you're going to be watching... Uh, you know, robots on TV, because they're just consistently funnier than, than human beings could possibly muster. So, uh, they're coming for all of us. They might be coming for translators first. Sorry. Well, you know what? We've already got Roombas. The Roomba science is not quite there yet. I'm pretty excited for Universal Translators, though. That, that'll be sweet. But you know, like, even if you're a person who works as an interpreter right now, there will always be people who are wealthier than they know what to do with. And they'll be like, oh, you use the robot interpreter? We have an artisan interpreter. Oh, it's just so nice to use analog instead, you know? The nuance isn't lost, etc., etc. By the way, don't take this as me saying, like, yo, this shit's gonna happen next year. In fact, 
You shouldn't take me as a, an authority on this subject at all. If there's anything you can trust me for in these videos, it's to remind you time and time again, deliberately or by way of my means of communication, that I am an idiot uh, and, and everything that I say here is my own personal opinion and, and it does not necessarily have you know empirical evidence to back it up necessarily. But, um, I you know, I think automation is a really interesting prospect. Uh, I would love a self-driving car. I like driving and, you know, go watch some Vancouver dash cam videos. It's fucking hell on earth out there. But even as much as I like driving, I'm gonna, as soon as like self-driving cars are around and they've hit critical mass out there, I'm all in on a self-driving car, man. Cause I would rather have slightly less fun and have a 0% chance to die in a car crash. Or not a zero, but a, a more infinitesimal percent chance to like get in a car accident that fucks up my whole life. That would be pretty sick. And I think it would be selfish of me to be like, nah, I'm gonna keep relying on my human mind. When this robot can do it for me, when the sum total of mankind's driving ability has been programmed into this machine. Anyway, it's going to make NASCAR horrible to watch. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.